Hello, I'm Dr. Ferguson. I'm one of the pancreas surgeons here at the University of New Mexico Comprehensive Cancer Center. Patients with pancreatic cancer are oftentimes treated by a team of physicians, not only a surgeon like me, but also a medical oncologist who treats patients with chemotherapy. Sometimes radiation oncologists are involved to treat patients with radiation. And we also work with a broader team of nurses, nutritionists, genetic counselors, and uh, a number of other uh, people to take comprehensive care of our patients with pancreatic cancer. The other team that we oftentimes will have patients see is the anesthesia team prior to surgery so that that team can meet you and review your medical history and the medications that you take and ensure that undergoing a major operation under anesthesia will be safe for you. Whipple procedure involves a removal of commonly tumors in the head of the pancreas, but also in the duodenum and the bile duct. And this is the operation that addresses uh, that entire area. During a Whipple procedure, we remove a portion of the head of the pancreas, as well as a portion of the bile duct, a portion of the small intestine called the duodenum and oftentimes a portion of the stomach. And we also take out the gallbladder during that procedure as well. The reason that we need to take out all of those structures is largely because a lot of those structures are interconnected and uh, intimately involved with one another. And it's very challenging to take out one without taking out the others and put everything back together. The other reason is because there's a lot of lymph nodes in that area and those need to come out during that procedure as well. The pancreas is very closely associated with some major blood vessels that run immediately behind the pancreas. And oftentimes tumors in that area can involve those blood vessels. And sometimes those blood vessels need to either be removed and repaired or entirely reconstructed. Occasionally, there are tumors in the pancreas that involve these vessels to such an extent that taking out the vessels is not feasible because putting everything back together would be very challenging without that adequate blood flow. Many of the blood vessels that are around the pancreas and that sometimes can be involved with tumors deal with blood supply to the small intestine and also drainage of the blood from the intestine as it flows up to the liver. And taking out those blood vessels and not being able to put them back together adequately can have serious ramifications on the health of the small intestine. There's not really anything you can do to make the surgery easier. Uh, the surgery is oftentimes guided just by where the tumor is. The most important thing you can do prior to surgery is remain as healthy as you can. And if you're a smoker, try to limit or stop smoking entirely and try to eat healthy and maintain your weight as much as possible. Most patients who have pancreatic cancer are treated with chemotherapy. Many patients are treated now with chemotherapy prior to surgery as well as after surgery. This is still a course of treatment that is under active investigation in clinical trials. But here at the University of New Mexico, we tend to treat patients with chemotherapy first, followed by surgery, followed by more chemotherapy. One problem with pancreatic surgery is that there is a risk of complications afterwards. And sometimes patients have complications after pancreatic surgery such that they are unable to get any chemotherapy afterwards. And so for that reason, as well as some others, we prefer to give chemotherapy prior to surgery. Patients who receive chemotherapy for pancreatic cancer most commonly receive approximately six months total of chemotherapy. If that's given after surgery, it's given all in one batch of six months. If it's given before surgery, oftentimes that amounts to three to four months of chemotherapy prior to surgery and two to three months after surgery.
Patients who have pancreatic cancer and need chemotherapy oftentimes will have a total of six months of chemotherapy. And as I mentioned before, that oftentimes is broken down into chemotherapy before surgery and after surgery. One purpose of having chemotherapy prior to surgery is so that tumors can get smaller and potentially make the surgery a little bit easier with respect to some of the blood vessels in that area. After patients have completed chemotherapy for pancreatic cancer, we very often will repeat imaging and blood work to ensure that the tumor is still located in the pancreas and has not spread to other organs or has spread to involve blood vessels nearby the pancreas. After chemotherapy is done, we typically wait at least four to six weeks or so before a surgery is performed. To undergo chemotherapy for pancreatic cancer prior to a planned surgery, occasionally do not end up having the planned operation for a number of reasons, one of which may be that the disease spreads while in chemotherapy to other organs, or that the tumor itself grows and makes the surgery uh, not possible. And in those cases, oftentimes we will have discussions with the patient's oncologist to determine whether it's reasonable to change the chemotherapy to a different regimen. On the day of your operation, you will arrive to the hospital sometime early in the morning and our office will contact you to uh, coordinate where and when to arrive at the hospital. You'll meet with a number of people once you're at the hospital, including the preoperative nurse, the anesthesia team, and the surgical team. Oftentimes patients who are undergoing pancreatic surgery will have a nerve block in order to help with pain control. And the purpose of this nerve block, which is essentially an injection in the back given by anesthesia prior to surgery, is to allow patients to avoid opioid pain medications as much as possible. After you've met the nursing team, the anesthesia team, and the surgical team, and we've confirmed that your consent and your blood work are up to date. Then you are brought to the operating room and put under anesthesia, and preparations are made to perform the actual operation. Generally, once you're asleep, you will have a catheter placed into your bladder and additional IV lines placed. And oftentimes you'll have a tube inserted into the nose and down the esophagus, which will reside in your stomach. And generally that stays until shortly after surgery. The catheter and the bladder oftentimes is removed the day after surgery. During surgery and after the pancreas is removed and the reconstruction is performed, oftentimes we leave drains that go through the skin and reside near these new connections that we make to the pancreas and the bile duct. And generally these drains are removed before you leave the hospital, unless there are concerns about what's coming out of the drain, such as pancreatic fluid, in which case the drains are left for up to a couple of additional weeks. Occasionally during pancreatic surgery, we detect disease that has spread outside of the pancreas to other organs or to the lining of the abdominal cavity. And oftentimes these lesions are not necessarily visible on preoperative imaging such as a CT scan and not otherwise detectable on uh, blood work tests. If we encounter that type of disease, oftentimes we have to stop the operation as that represents stage four disease. And we know that patients with stage four disease involving pancreatic cancer will not benefit from an operation with curative intent to remove all the disease. The Whipple procedure usually takes anywhere between three and eight hours, depending on how difficult the tumor is to remove and how difficult it is to put everything back together. When you recover, generally that means that you'll be in the hospital for a minimum of seven days. And during that time, we will control your pain. We will uh, take out some of the drains that may have been placed during surgery. 
We will have you advance your diet slowly and we'll make sure that you're able to walk around and have normal bowel function. Sometimes patients after pancreatic surgery have complications that need to be dealt with and in those cases the length of stay after surgery in the hospital will be a little bit longer depending on the nature of those complications. After you have recovered from your pancreatic surgery and you're discharged from the hospital, generally we'll see you back in our clinic about a week or two after your discharge. During that visit, we will remove any staples that have been placed in your skin to help it heal. We will usually check your blood work and make sure that you're having no complications after surgery that need to be addressed. Following this, oftentimes we will repeat imaging uh, every three months or so for the first year, and oftentimes that involves repeating blood work as well. And that's done with the intention to make sure that any disease that was removed during your Whipple operation has not come back and that that area is healing well. The other piece of your follow-up care involves going back to see an oncologist and discussing the timing for generally resuming chemotherapy if you received it uh, prior to surgery as well. If you did not receive chemotherapy prior to surgery, then we will also have you see an oncologist to determine the timing for starting chemotherapy in the first place. Thanks for pursuing your care here at the University of New Mexico Comprehensive Cancer Center. And I would encourage you to reach out to our office if you have any questions about anything that we've discussed here today between now and the time that you have your surgery.